in the last lecture, we have discussed about the normal distribution and the characteristic of normal curve. So now we're going to discuss about the standard normal curve. So the standard normal curve is just a single curve, which we can use to calculate the proportion of a normal distribution. So the standard normal curve is one curve that we use as a reference. So as we discussed in the previous lectures, if we knew the mean and standard deviation of a population for a particular variable, so for example, the measurement, we can compute the probabilities. However, it's troublesome to calculate each time for different population variables because of the long equations. So when we want to calculate the probability, we have to calculate the area under curve which will involve a very uh, long calculations. So one way to do it is to have a theoretical distribution, a standard normal curve. So for any distributions, okay, for any of our data set distribution, this is a mathematical definition. If we standardize the mean, is equal to zero and standard deviation is one. So when we put the value, so that if the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one, this is one, we will get a theoretical distribution. So this is how the standard normal curve look like. So we have the mean, so the mean is zero. And then on the axis, we have the standard deviation. And we know that for a normal curve, it's a symmetry. And the probability under the curve is 100%. So for the entire curve. Okay. And because the curve is symmetry, so half of the distribution, okay, half of the observation is larger than mean. And another half of the observation is smaller than mean. And we can also calculate about the, if the mean is zero and standard deviation is one. So the probability when the st one standard deviation is here. So it's 0 0.15. So it's 15.87%. And the uh, two standard deviation is here. So the area under curve is 0 0.0228. So it's 2.28%. And so on and so forth. Okay. So this is a standard curve that we use. We can use this as a reference where the probability has been given according to the number of standard deviation away from mean. So as this is symmetry, we know that the value between negative one and one standard deviation here is 68.28% and for 90% of the value is between negative 1.64 standard deviation and because this is a symmetry so this is a 1.64 standard deviation. Once you have a standard normal curve and we calculate the probability for different uh, value of standard deviation away from mean then we can calculate the probability given a standard deviation. So in this case, for the number of standard deviation away from mean is zero. Here, we know that the probability on this side is 0 0.5. Okay. For one is 0 0.187. Then we also can calculate this for different value that was calculated from this formula. This table is what we call the standard normal table. So this is what we explained just now. So we can have a range of value for Z for the first column. So this is a Z value. So it's a number of standard deviation away from the mean. So if the Z value is zero, then the value is 0 0.5. 
So as you can see, the highest value is 0 0.5. So that means that they give you the estimate for one side because this normal curve is symmetry. So the 0 0.1 is 0 0.64, the probability. As this is a symmetry curve, so for the value is negative 0 0.y, we also have a same probability on this side. So we can calculate the proportion of normal distribution by, use, by using a standard normal curve. And as long as we know how far a value from the mean in terms of standard deviation. So for example, now we have a, a population of the distribution of body heights where the mean of the population is 1.65 and the standard deviation is 1. So the question is why the proportion of the population body height is larger than 165. Can you estimate easily without doing any calculation? Okay, by using this information, 